Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Enchanting Lawyer Podcast. This is a, a podcast where we um, interview the most inspiring entrepreneurs who share their uh, stories with us and help us do our job better. And I'm your host, Jacob Sapochnik, and today we have a very, very um, um, interesting and exciting guest. You know, in the past uh, um, a few weeks, we've been sharing uh, stories about technology, about uh, new ways where we can connect and share information with our uh, audience. And today, uh, uh, my guest today is is one of the most uh, uh, foremost leaders in this in this area. We have, today we have Brian Kramer, who is uh, the world's foremost leader in the art and science of sharing, and has been credited with in, instigating the H two H human business movement in marketing and social. With over three hundred thousand social fans and followers, and an intimate understanding of the intricates and networking of both social technologies and social behaviors. Uh, Brian is a very well-respected person uh, in the space of social media, and he's advocating the uh, the science of shareology. Um, and I'm very excited to have Brian here today. Welcome, Brian, to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, man. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. And um, you know, Brian, I, I told you before before we started the the show that I was really excited about your book because. Um, you know, as as attorneys, uh, you know, in our firm, and 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 I advocate the the power of connection and and making people uh, understand that they need to be more open and sharing and connecting. And unfortunately, in our space, it's not happening. And so that's why I'm excited that you're here today. Kind of give us more of an in depth as to um, what is shareology. What you know, why did you write the book? And uh, kind of d- dive into more about the concepts that you talk about in the book. But before that, why don't you just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? and how you started doing what you're doing. Yeah, so, um, well, the book was, is branched off of my, um, uh, it, it's an extension of my first book called Human to Human. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no B2B or B2C, it's Human to Human. And um, that book was, um, was, was really exciting and, and, and also, um, you know, it was a very su- successful book and I had a lot of good times with, um, you know, just how, the, how much the, the message was resonating. And so I decided to write this book um, really as an extension of that. Um, and so HH was a 500-foot level kind of book, and this is really down a little bit more in the trenches. Um, it's the art and the science of sharing, but it's really all about how sharing powers the human economy. And, um, and everything that we're doing right now is really, um, you know, all about sharing, connecting, building, with each other and uh, as as such uh, things like you know Airbnb and mm-hmm. and um, you know Uber and all these different um, shared services and I mean, you're seeing all these different apps connecting people and connecting services to people um, and everything really is about sharing that experience or sharing the service or sharing a product um, and and trusting each other out of all these different things and it's really kind of heightened what we already are about um, what we've already done in the past which was really built on relationships it's just put a magnifying glass to it and so um, I wrote this book based on that. It's the art and the science of sharing, and, and broken down into those two um, two uh, uh, segments or two two kind of um, parts for that reason. And you know, one of the things that I, I think I heard you uh, uh, say it in a speech or or an article, but you always say that um, you always ask your audience uh, if they took um, a, a class on sharing. And, and, and you bring the example of kindergarten. When kids, you know, we learn how to share toys and, and things like that. It's a skill that, that we start with, but we don't carry with it. And, and, I'm, and I'm curious, what, what do you think this comes from? Like, we, we learn how to share as children, but then we don't, we kind of lose it as we, we, as we transition into adulthood. And why is it so important? Yeah, so, I mean, it's a skill that we teach ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that we've ever been taught in a class, um, you're right. That's something I bring up quite often because, um, especially with uh, social media, it's now becoming starting to become a class or classes at college. But um, but it's it's not for a lot of people and a lot of generations behind us, uh, um, or I should say, in front of us that um, that uh, learn this as a as 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 part of their role or part of their job. And I mean, here you are, you're, you're, you know, in the legal field and it's, it's probably as prominent there as it is anywhere else. We are all learning to, uh, combine, we've all, all learned it as a skill growing up and have we learned it, uh, online? Do we really know how 
how the two needs to work together. And so that's that's really why I, w- I wanted to write the book. And, you know, it, it's the question of sharing comes often. You know, as children, we always say, well, why do I have to give the toy to this person? Why do we share? And, and, I, and I know you've done the research uh, before you wrote the book. I think it took you almost two years to come up with, uh, with the material for this, you know, coming from the first book. But during that time, I, I, I want to know, first of all, why people share and, and, and why sharing is so important to understand, especially now in 2015. Um, well, it's important right now because of um, because we're we're able to get out and meet uh, so many different people, whether it's for our jobs or for what um, you know we need to do to to build and grow our networks or communities. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a global community now, and we're able to actually get across uh, you know continents and easily you know hear back from each other in seconds about things. It's the biggest focus group on earth and it allows us to um, connect with people to be able to um, share more about what interests us and, and learn new things quicker than we could, more quickly than we ever could before. I mean, you know, it used to be that the only way you're going to educate yourself was go to college or right. go to go to school and now, you know, now you have Google and YouTube and there's just, there isn't anything that you can't learn online if you put your, your mind to it. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't go to college because you do get it quite a bit there. But, but uh, um, you know, there's so much out there um, of content and information, and um, and again on the human side, the 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 people connections and how do you bridge the two together? It's done through sharing, and um, you know, and and when when your friend says, like I had a friend that I, you know told me which bike to buy right. um, because he was interested in. Um, in, in seeing me get on the right bike. Um, but if I were to go, um, you know, uh, ask the company, which bike should I buy or ask any company, of course, they're going to say their own brand. Right. So we, we trust our friends more than we trust our, um, you know, our, the, the brands themselves. And, and that perpetuates the question of whether an individual brand is stronger than, um, you know, a brand itself. And, and I'd venture to say that they're either equal or, or yes, uh, individual brands are, are more, powerful in certain situations because they are people and we do trust people more. So, um, so there, that plays a role into the whole sharing, um, aspect in the human economy as well. Right. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that you discovered, I believe you, you interviewed more than 250 people uh, or close to that, uh, during the research. And one of the things you, you realize that people do that because we want to connect. Connection is important because connection means that we can learn. It means we can reach people. It means that we can, uh, um, you know, share and, and and let them know more about us, about our services. And then you you found out there's there's six types of people who share. And and I'm curious. First of all, how did how did you come up with that uh, um, division of sharers? Uh, well, that that's from um, a study that the New York Times did two years ago, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and they brought up the different types of shares through a report study that they, um, you know, did on I think it was over two thousand. I could be wrong on that, but I think it was over two thousand uh, people. They they classified their different types of shares into those six different categories, and um, and and I think it's really exciting because or important I should say because you can take um, you know just about anybody and fit them into a um, you know fit them into a certain area now that doesn't mean that people can't share in different categories we've all you know slid between one category to the next and um, you know it makes us um, you know a human that way because we can slide in between certain um, you know certain um, different uh, categories so that categories just in case you're wondering is all the altruists the careerists, the hipsters, mm-hmm. the boomerangs, the connectors, and the selectives, and um, and and when you're doing your marketing planning around mm-hmm. social media or social marketing, or or even just around how you're going to engage with people in general, um, you can you can you can definitely des- design like a persona or a different kind of person and craft your message around it because you know a, a selective mm-hmm. is is somebody who observes; they're not somebody who is going to engage a lot like a hipster a hipster is somebody who engages right. a lot you know they um, they have uh, a lot more um, 
uh, they're 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 the first people to go out and get technology and show it off to everybody, and and they're first mm-hmm. to like something and so on and so forth. A selective wouldn't do that. A like selective a Scoble. Would, sure, it's, yeah, yeah. So a Scoble <laughs> would be a, a, a hipster. Yeah, and um and so anyway, um these these different categories, these ways of thinking should um, enter into our minds as, as business people and as, as marketers um, to figure out how we're going to engage differently because, uh, again, not everybody's the same. So you, you would say, let's say, uh, uh, somebody in the service business, somebody like an attorney or an accountant, do you think it's important for us to uh, understand who we're dealing with, whether it's a client or, or um, you know, uh, opposing counsel or anybody? To know what kind of uh, shares um, you know they are, just to help us deal with them more effectively. Um, so it's, it's uh, unfortunately our, our connection broke a little bit. If you can say that one more time. So, for example, let's say um, um, in a, in everyday life, let's say we are in the service business, and I'm dealing with different people. Do you think it's important for us to try to determine what type of of shares they are to, to help us? make our communication with them easier. If somebody is a connector or if somebody is a, is a hipster, then we deal with them differently or, or we know how to communicate with them. Totally. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can use this stuff in life, right, mm-hmm. um, as just basic skill sets. Um, knowing who you're talking to only makes engagement better, and that goes for life. Um, so when you know who, you know, if, if somebody's more interested in uh, their career, somebody's a connector, they're more interested in connecting people together, that's what they thrive off of. Um, you know, there's there's different aspects to that, to what goes with that kind of a person and what they thrive on. And you can help them to meet those needs pretty quickly by knowing what they are. Right. And I, I, I totally agree with that. And I, I don't know if, if anybody asked you this question, but that's something that, that bothers me personally. What do you think of, of people or, or, or that refuse to share? And and so, what does it tell you about about them, and, and how do you how do we handle that? And I, and I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I started, um, you know, in, in in the legal field, I just opened my law firm. I was just me. Um, I was you know reaching out to different attorneys and asking for advice, and some were kind and some were less. But I remember the case where I actually uh, reached out to somebody and I asked them for a sample of a brief because I was you know two days from from a deadline. I could lose my case, and I was talking to the attorney. He told me more or less about it, and he said he'd done a similar case. But then he refused to share the brief with me. And I asked him why. And he says, it's my work, and, uh, and I'm not going to give it to you. And so I, I, I didn't, I mean, I felt very bad. Um, but I, 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 I keep thinking about it over the years. What does it tell me about this person, about the way, the way they do business, about how they continue to grow their business? And I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that. Let's see. So... Um yeah, I think um, you know people are 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 interesting, especially um, you know as brands. I think I think I think the crux of what you're asking is around personal branding um, and how you grow your business and right. around your brand, and um, and that's um, I you know it's interesting. I'm putting together a presentation right now about how to embrace. Mm-hmm. Um, your yourself and and how to embrace yourself around a, a business. Um, I think that we identify with with people again. I think I've said this before. People that we do brands. So I, I think it's important now to separate you know yourself from the brand at least because it, it, at the very least because you, people are going to connect and, and understand you more. So for instance. Um, for the last uh, we're, we're we've been in business for fifteen years, but right. for the last. Um, I would say for 10 years, I, I just believed solely in pure matter in our business, our digital agency. And so, um, there was no personal branding whatsoever. And we were, we had always struggled with getting new business. Um, we'd always struggled with where we we're going to find, um, you know, the next piece of business or sustain ourselves because, um, we were always very dedicated to the clients that we had. Right. But, um, you know, as any business, you also have to look forward and make sure that you're, you know, always keeping your your pipeline and your options uh, open to more opportunities, and um, and because we were so focused on pure matter and the brand, um, it was constantly hard to keep up. Which I'm sure a lot of businesses have that problem. And so, um, you know, I just decided that I was tired of the rat race, and um, and I started to break out from the brand and and 
brand myself. And I had a really hard time with that because I'm not really that um, good at shouting my own name from the rooftops. I'd rather mm -hmm. shout somebody else's from the rooftops. But um, when I started to get out and talk to people and really kind of be, obviously be me, be authentic, but at the same time, you know, really build um, my own voice and my own tone and my own, you know, community and connect with people, right. then the more opportunities we started to get because people wanted to, they started to get to know me better and they started wanting to get to work with us better, more. And right. so, um, so I, I really think that, um, you know, if I were to throw out a different brand like Apple or Amazon, then you'd probably say, you know, Steve Jobs, even still, he's not there, but, um, right. you know, or, um, or Jeff Bezos. Uh, you know, every company has a strong leader and that leader is the, is a part of the brand and they're also a separate brand. And the reason that they're so successful is because each of those leaders has branded themselves personally just as well they, as they've branded the company. And, um, and so for that reason, I think that would be my, my suggestion to everybody is to uh, make sure that you're really branding, you know, the person behind the brand. And I, and I think in the, in the examples you provided, you know, the, the fact that they're out there and, and branding themselves, they also provide a, a sense of, of security and comfort. People know that, you know, if Steve Jobs is behind the product and Amazon, then they feel that there's some value there. And it's not just the name of a company. There's somebody there who stands behind the product. So in, in a way, you've done it for your brand. And people believe in what you tell and, and how, you, how you teach um, uh, what you do. So I like that. Um, Brian, can you share with us some mistakes that you've seen people do with sharing, whether it's online or offline, and what we can learn from that? Yeah, I mean, um, gosh, there's so many of them. <laughs> um, we're all making notable. mistakes every every day. I mean, the mistakes are so, um, the, you know, there's so many of them. Um, like the mistake with U.S. Air when, mm -hmm. you know, they, they accidentally tweeted out a picture of a lady, you know, who was naked with a plane going into the improper place, a uh, little toy trip yep. plane. And, um, you know, they accidentally p pasted the link into the, um, of that, of the, uh, um, of, of the plane in the shot into the tweet instead of uh, flagging it and telling them that, you know, there was something wrong um, with it. And so that person, instead of getting fired, us air actually kept them on board and said, who knows their, uh, this person knows how to, how to do it better than anyone else in terms of not doing that again. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of these kinds of things that happen. And, um, I think you, you need to embrace them is, is the biggest thing. Um, when it does happen, just speak up and say, Hey, you know, here's what happened and here's what we're going to, you know, do differently. Uh, next time and and I think people tend to forget and forgive when you do that but when they don't do that and they're hiding it and you know having a hard time with it then that's when I see brands start to f fall down and you know have a much harder time with it right especially when they um, they're not accountable for what they do you know it's you know it's it's, it's one thing to do to make a mistake how do you fix it is really kind of I, I guess it's also part of shareology because you know we all make mistakes but what do we do to show we make it right Exactly. And, you know, it, it's interesting because right now, I mean, there's so many tools uh, to share. I mean, we have, uh, and, and I'm curious to hear your, your take on this. I mean, we have uh, uh, tools like uh, Meerkat and Periscope and Snapchat. And, 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 and I've been using them a lot, and I'm sure that you have. What do you think, how, do, how can we use tools like that uh, um, for sharing, and, and what does it do for us? Um. Well, I think that you can you can automate um, sharing. You can't automate mm -hmm. engagement. Um, so it's okay to automate and schedule and put things out and plan and all that. I do think that there's moments and there's times when you need to be real and in the moment. Um, and when you are, that's you know it's going to be it's going to be um, seen that way, and people will like that as much. Uh, but not everything in life is um, you know. Uh, either scheduled or not scheduled. It takes a good balance of the two. So sure. I don't see a reason with, with not doing um, either or. I think doing both is great. Um, but you know, using a thing like Hootsuite or Buffer to, to send out your tweets is a great idea. Um, but you know, mix it in and throw some, um, 
some of your immediate thoughts in and embrace a moment that's different or funny and share it out and and um, and you'd be surprised what people are going to come back and do so um, there's that um, and then I think you know on the flip side when somebody says something back it's really important to uh, reply back again and have mm -hmm. a, have an engagement because that's what the whole thing's about if you're just going to push messages out it's not real um, it's not really that that innovative um, to to push information out that's that's what advertising was about all about uh, social media is much more about the engagement and the relationship yeah, building relationships, building connections and actually showing people that you care and I think that's really something that is has been missing and now with all the tools uh, that we have, we, we can show people we care. You know, if we do a, a live stream, we can actually speak to them and say, "Yes, I care about you, my audience," and uh, and, if, and it's, I think it's just going to grow. And, and Brian, uh, for people that want to buy the book, can you please share with us where we can find it and um, what's the best way to get it? Um, best way to buy it is if you wanted to go to Amazon, just type in Shareology, you'll get the book there. Um, or if you wanted to uh, go over to um, my website at briancreamer.com, that's Brian with a Y or Kramer with a K, and uh, .com, and then just click on books, and they'll be there as well. Perfect. And I'll make sure that we have the links in our show notes for people to be able to buy the book. And as we end, come to the end of our episode, Brian, I would like you to uh, leave us with a tip or um, um, some words of wisdom, how to make sharing more effective or anything you want to share with our listeners um, that will take this shareology concept and take it forward. That's a good question. So, um, one of the biggest tips I can say is if you're looking to um, really get quality engagement, like really good engagement, I would highly suggest that you look for tweet chats. And um, and if you find a tweet chat that you like, um, there's a bunch of them. So. Like Buffer Chat has a great tweet chat, or you can join mine. I have one on Mondays mm -hmm. at no at noon called H two H Chat. Um, but there's there's hundreds of them literally, and if you jump into those tweet chats, um, uh, and you've had any kind of challenges with Twitter before, um, you'll quickly get a lot of engagement. You get a lot of followers. You get a lot of good information and you may meet some new people that you couldn't have met before without doing something like that. It's just a really quick and easy thing to do and it takes, you could jif you can jump in on one and take part for five minutes, 20 minutes or um, there's some up to an hour. So there's a lot of a lot of really good uses and I would say jump in a, into a tweet chat and you'll, you'll find a lot of really good um, uh, stuff there. This is a great tip. And, and Brian, for people who want to find yours, basically what we can do is just search in the Twitter search box for the hashtag that's, that uh, is associated with your chat, right? Yeah, just search in the, in the, uh, in the Twitter um, search for H2H, that's H numeral 2H, chat. And, or just um, uh, uh, look, look for H2H chat on Mondays at noon at Pacific Standard Time. Perfect. And again, I'll, I'll make sure we link that as well in our show notes for people to, uh, to be able to find it. And I'll, and I'll be sure to join one of those as well, Brian. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, uh, to join uh, my, our show. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, our listeners, for tuning in every week. If you have any questions, you can email me at jacob at enchantingloyer.com. And we'll see you at our next episode. Thank you so much.